<laughs> All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Once again, it's our uh, bi-weekly um, RDA Tech Q&A here. We do, we answer your burning, itching, reddening technical questions. And if you have burning and itching and reddening technical questions about certain areas of your anatomy, we don't help. <laughs> yeah, we don't do those. Unless you've got some sort of implant, then maybe we do. No. No, really? No. Have you seen people? They, they, they put like, they get like magnets implanted now. Have you seen that? No. Wait, where? And like their fingers and they can like sense electrical fields and stuff. Right? Oh, okay, okay. I, because we started with burning, itching, reddening, and then you switched to magnets, and I wasn't sure if we were in the still same general areas of anatomy, and that would be really painful. Well, I didn't say they get them implanted there. You, you, but you didn't. You didn't seg very. It was a nice. Excuse me. You did seg very well into that, so it wasn't clear that it wasn't. And um. High power magnets seems like they'd be okay. You wouldn't you wouldn't be doing button flies at that point anymore. I can't get my trousers off. Um, uh, I am Nash. I do RDA, and I also have uh, over a decade of technical experience with gizmos and gadgets and whatnot professionally. Over there, this is. Mike Gearman, my my uh, producer, he's also has a background in tech. We'll be answering some of your questions tonight. Also, we're going to look at a little bit of the news. And whoa, it's it's it was not a good week for AMD. I think I missed this one. Oh, you missed this one. Okay, let me set this one up for everybody. AMD is uh, one of two main dedicated graphics cards designers in the world. Oh, okay, I didn't miss. For some reason, I thought you, uh, AMD, my brain translated to AMC. I'm like, what does the uh, movie channel have to do with any of this? And it, it didn't. Well, the it's Preacher uh, series looks awful. No. It does. <clears throat> um, I'm still going to watch it. What, uh, what AMD is the other graphics card producer, the main one in the world being NVIDIA. AMD has been... The good one in the world being NVIDIA. AMD has been playing catch-up to NVIDIA for years, and by playing catch-up, I mean being like 300 miles behind, and... They've got something, what, only 15% of the market or something like that? Yeah, it's, it's not been good for AMD. So one of their uh, big initiatives is to address a problem that's long been regarded with AMD, and that's their drivers. AMD, for the better part of the past decade, has I, th I think it's been about 10 years, has been uh, using what they call the Catalyst system. Yeah, drivers. they were on Catalyst with the last of AMD with the last AMD card I did, which was, yeah, 10 years ago. And the... They had always been buggy, glitchy, slow to release, and not very quick to respond to games optimization. Because the main reason for getting a graphics card is gaming. And yep. <clears throat> games, new games, need optimization with the hardware to work properly sometimes. AMD is which, is why, which is why NVIDIA has that... Uh... I think, oh, there's a new game that's come out. Download these game-ready drivers. Game ready. I don't play this game. Fuck off. They, and it still says, no, please download them. They have a, NVIDIA has been Johnny on the spot with with drivers. Every well, they, time. They, they like money. <clears throat> well, yeah. The, in, <laughs> NVIDIA has had great um, software support. I, I wouldn't say the software itself is great, but at least they're working on it visibly. <laughs> So to combat this, AMD finally said, okay, we're doing a new thing. We're retiring Catalyst, and now we're doing a new system called Crimson, which will be uh, timely updates and releases and better optimization and everything. And Linux support, and, and we'll give you a puppy, and there'll be ice cream, and uh, no, it sucks. So... 
right out of the gate, you would think AMD would be, all right, this is our moment. We've got to show everyone that we are still a contender in the graphics card arena. We've got to show everyone that we are still someone out there capable of rivaling NVIDIA. We have got to show everyone, what do you mean the drivers are setting cards on fire? <laughs> yeah, saw this one. <laughs> what happened? Okay, let's, let's talk a little bit about your computer now and how it works. Everything in your computer generates heat. Yes. Everything. Everything. Your CPU, your processor, your motherboard. Some parts of your computer generate more heat than others. Namely, um, your video card, your processor. Yeah. Uh, there are so many transistors packed into such a tiny space using, even though they've reduced power consumption quite a bit, it still uses a lot of electricity in a, in a very small amount of real estate. And the high frequency means that because it's changing from up highs and lows so quickly, more heat is generated. So as a result, in order to take care of this, uh, your CPU and your graphics card typically have a heat sink and a fan. That's a big block of metal with a great big fan strapped to it to keep the metal cool. The metal sucks the heat away from the processor and the fan cools off the metal. This is important because if they're not present, fire. Unless you're computing in the Arctic. Well, yeah, you put the fucker outside and you're fine. No, unless you have a heat sink and fan in working order, fire essentially is what happens. AMD's latest drivers had a little bit of a problem talking to the fan that was connected to their graphics cards. No, they talked to the fan just fine. They just didn't tell the fan to do the right thing. Um, the graphics cards permanently set the speed of the, the drivers set the speed of the fan to about 20%. At max. It could go lower, but realistically, most people, it's only when they first booted up their machine that it's that low. Now, what it's supposed to do is, as your graphics card gets hotter, the driver is supposed to see the temperature and go, whoa, you're getting warm there, and make the fan go faster. Yes. This is a power consumption uh, optimization. It also keeps the fan noise down. It's when your card is not hot, the fan is slow. When the card is hot, the fan goes faster. Because thermodynamics is your friend. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the driver told the video card fan the absolute fastest it could go was 20% of its total speed. Yeah, and the important bit, another important bit here, not on every card. Yeah. If, it, if it was every card, you'd think they would have caught it in QA. you think someone would have gone, I'm going to put Fallout 4 on this thing. Oh, look, the card caught on fire. I wonder why the hell that happened. But it only happened on a subset of the cards, and I don't think anyone has worked out the pattern yet. Which is troubles. I mean, even <clears throat> even the people who who it did affect, if it wasn't everyone, it's still we're talking two hundred dollar, three hundred dollar, up to six hundred dollar video cards. Yeah. Now nothing literally caught fire, fortunately. However, some cards were damaged. Yes. When your graphics card or your CPU or sometimes even your RAM overheats, sometimes it'll come back and it'll be fine, but other times permanent damage has been done to the electronics. And the only way to fix it is to replace it. Replace it. <clears throat> which gets kind of pricey. Now, hopefully uh, AMD is going to step up and replace any video cards that can be provably damaged. Well, that, that's one of those things. Provably damaged. Oh my God, don't they like to bend over backwards to pretend I, like this shit didn't happen? 
Yeah, I would think I would think NVIDIA would probably do the same thing. It's corporations in general. It's in this is a big fumble. Now, had this just been a regular release with an established track record like NVIDIA, for example, it would have been a stumble. But it wouldn't have been, you know, it wouldn't have garnered so much attention. But this was the launch. This was AMD stepping up saying, we're back. Where is that Shit. burning smell coming from? You had one job, Bob. One. Fan yeah. speed. That's why you know, they. This should have. This should not have happened. This is one of those that. And they've already got a patch, to my understanding. Yeah. And but so I, the 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 one thing they haven't talked about was, to my knowledge, is how how difficult or what the, what was involved in this in triggering this since it wasn't you know it wasn't like amd's line from this company or amd's this spec or what caused it to say how difficult it was to actually occur i mean was it was it a case where it only happens when you have this card series and this processor we don't know no one said so i mean i'm not I'm not saying they didn't screw up. I'm saying we don't know how rare or how convoluted the screw up had to be to occur. I, you know, for my take on it. Because they can't test everything. Well, for my take on it is the optics on this are really bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, the, especially this is the big, this is the big relaunch. This was the big, you know, every, every, all eyes were on NVIDIA and they shot themselves. And that's not good. And it's not really instilling a whole bunch of confidence. While we're on the subject of heat <laughs> sinks and coolers, um, it's not just AMD having some issues. Uh, if you'll notice your processor heat sink and cooler is probably one of the larger ones in most of it, it, given whatever computer you have. Lots of people like to get aftermarket heat sinks and coolers for their main CPU. Oh yeah, um, because the, the the one that comes with the CPU is generally not spectacular. I mean, it, it's sufficient, but it's not spectacular. I wouldn't even say efficient. I would say it, no, sufficient. If you're sufficient, if you're not over, yeah. If, if you're not overclocking, it is sufficient to do the job. Yeah, but most people don't want that. They want their their shiny copper pipes and their bells and whistles or their water cooling, and, or they just want the damn thing to not be so loud. This is also true. The fan that generally comes with those things is pretty. It's, it's... You've been watching Dumb and Dumber again, haven't you? Yes. Um. So one of the things about these is while they are useful, they are also not cheap. Some of the really good ones can run up. up. Just the heat sink and fan can run upwards of $100. Oh, yeah. So lots of times when a system builder upgrades their system, they keep their old aftermarket heat sink and fan because they dropped a lot of money on it. If it still works in that socket, yeah. Well, um, Intel's latest processors, these based on the Skylake architecture, um, they will fit in some of the same sockets as Haswell, the older one. However, they used a slightly thinner substrate. When and just home, what, what that is, is the, the chip itself is mounted on basically uh, a piece of material. A whiffer. Yes. And uh, the substrate, in this case, the manufacturing process took it down from either 45 to 35 or 35 to 25, something like that. It went down by 10. Yeah, shaved off some micromillimeters. And, you know, we say, well, what deal does this make? It saves them pennies on a chip, but when they're making millions of chips or billions of chips, this saves them, you know, a lot of money and a lot of material. But it's also a, thing, a time when you need to do a little bit of math. And while Intel claimed that, oh, yeah, the, the the specs on these are exactly the, the same in terms of, of pressure and mounting, and you're fine. 
No. Did not turn out to be the case. Um, certain third-party CPU coolers could damage Skylake CPUs and motherboards thanks to Skylake's thinner construction. Independent testing, uh, German tech site Games Hardware found that the pressure exerted by some popular coolers caused the structurally weaker Skylake CPU to bend, thus damaging the motherboard's delicate pins and contacts. This is one of those, those moments where math is so important. Yes. Now, I will note, I read this article, and there was one guy in the comments who was talking about how he, when he realized this had happened, he's either in the story or the comments, he took the chip out, he took the processor out, got out a really powerful magnifying glass and a really fine pair of tweezers and bent the pins back into shape until he got his computer to boot again. And I'm like, dude, you, you've got more time on your hands than you know to do it. Well, either more time or not quite as much money because them things ain't cheap. Yeah. We're talking a $200 processor in some cases. Yeah. Now, one of the problems with this, the way this works is when for most but not all heat sinks, they screw down. So you have a, a, a pad, you know, you've got four or six or eight screws that you tighten down, and there's a recommended pattern you're mm -hmm. supposed to tighten these things down in. It's like if any of you have changed a tire, you know how you're supposed to put the lug nuts on in a certain pattern so that the tire, you know, stays on straight. It's the same thing with the CPU. You tighten the, the heat sink down on there in the same pattern so it stays on straight, and you don't have uneven heating, or rather, uneven cooling. And with this thinner substrate, you can't just crank it down with the strength you used to. You've got to stop at a certain point. I've got the, I've got the picture up here on on screen, and I don't know how well you can see it, but if you look there, there's a. If you look, you can see the the the, the line of of the CPU. It's bendy. <laughs> it's it's just ever so slightly and that is a, if you work with computers and stuff at all you never want to see that that's scary that's that is yeah because in order to see what we're talking about if you look uh i've got another picture up this is from the ars technical article uh if you look right here you'll see the one on the right is Haswell, and it's ever so slightly thicker. The one on the left is Skylake, and it's slightly thinner. And you would think the whole thinner thing, someone, some engineer somewhere would have gone, hang on a second. But nobody did. And this got out, and what this comes down to is, if you're building a brand new computer, May check and see if the processor you're getting is one of Intel Skylake processors. If it is, and you want to use your old heat sink and fan from a previous computer, check the manufacturer's website before you install it on a Skylake processor, else you could ruin your CPU and your motherboard. This is kind of one of those big ones. Yeah. Now, what a lot of the heat sink manufacturers are saying about this, by the way, it says the damage is most likely to occur when you're moving or shipping a system. Uh, mm. you know, that's it. Bouncing around. It's, yeah. It, that's now. That said, you still shouldn't be cranking it down that hard. I mean, it's the, the contact is not. You're not torquing this down like you would lug nuts. <laughs> it has to be firm, not tight. And some of the some of this. Um, heat sinks are spring loaded so that you can't tighten them down beyond a certain point. I mean, you can tighten the screw down, but the spring and the way it's set up will not. Well, Sky uh, heat sink manufacturer already released a fix for this, which was new screws with a different spring to change the resistance on the screwing it down. So some manufacturers are coming up with fixes for this, but if you're going to be rebuilding from an old system, something to keep in mind. Yeah, um, and a lot of um, uh, if you're if you're building a new system and you're getting a new new heatsink, 
uh, check on the box just to see if it works for this this uh, chip brand. That that is the that's the problem here. Intel told all the heatsink manufacturers. Yeah, it's got the same. Okay, so if you're building one six months from now, <laughs> they their boxes. And they've updated it. Forget about this. This this is just this is nothing. This is nothing. What we were just saying. Forget all about that. Um. Okay. Finally, we have yet another. God damn! How does this keep fucking happening? And in this case, it's really. Yes. Well, okay. Internet of Things. We keep, everybody wants to put everything on the internet. They want to put your light bulbs on the internet. They want to put your washing machine on the internet. They want to put your dog on the internet. They want to jack Linux into your grandma. Is, uh, is this the Barbie one? This is the VTech one. Oh, okay. Cause while the Barbie went, bar there was a Hello Barbie was found with a theoretical crypto bug that had not been exploited in the wild yet. That was bad. Why is... Why? Why does your Barbie doll need computer crypto security? That was bad enough. But no, no. We're talking about VTech. VTech is a Hong Kong company that makes internet connected gadgets and toys for kids, uh, especially, you know, little kid type tablets and other things. And with built in cameras, cameras. Yes. Well, apparently not only were these not very strongly kept um, in terms of security, not only were these very not well wrangled, um, it's come to light that VTech was keeping on its servers names, email address, passwords, and home addresses of, of, of nearly 5 million parents and the first names, genders, and birthdays of more than 200,000 kids. I, I, have, I have one one question to start off with here. How how do how do five million parents have only two hundred thousand kids if these are kids' choice? It's the new it's the new nuclear family. They, they, they we we have timeshare kids. Okay. You, you you have the kid for like two days and you pass it off to another parent because frankly, who who can stand the little fuckers longer than that? Um, <laughs> what what they also found was on VTEC servers they had. Videos, photos, and chat logs between parents and kids. All stored on their servers. Just oodles and oodles of them. And they got hacked and someone found this out. Yeah. I forget how many gigabytes of data did they get? Um, I'll, I'll, many gigabytes, uh, 190 gigabytes worth of photos of kids, of kids, not only just, not only their pictures, but linking, identifying inf information, chats with their parents. So that's fucked up right there. A hacker can get that information. They can see what the kids and the parents talk about. And it's very easy to suddenly fake being a parent to the child online. And that can go to some very nasty places. I uh, okay. Why? In the name of fucking why would a toy company be keeping all of this in all this data on their servers why don't know i mean unless it's you know secretly owned by the chinese government slash military and they want to use it for future uh spy work i do i mean that's the way the paranoid conspiracy theory part of it wants to go um i was encouraged by the fact 
that the hacker who uncovered this said uh, he didn't intend to publish or sell the data and provided uh, a few internet uh, news agencies with the information, snippets of the information for verification purposes. Yes, this was here. Take your shit off. That's messed up when even the hackers go, dude, this is fucked up, guys. You know, normally I would put this shit on like Reddit and 4chan and all I like post all the data, but this is kids. This is fucked up, man. Even the hackers are going, what the fuck, man? This is messed up. I don't know how we got here. I'm scared. He, he, he quoted, he quoted, uh, he's quoted the hacker who apparently did an encrypted chat with one of these story authors. It was quoted as, frankly, it makes me sick. I was able to get all this stuff. VTech should have the book thrown at them. That's from a hacker. That's, that's, even the hacker's going, yo, yo, man, yo. Well, it's like the hackers who occasionally find, uh, you know, they, they've done something, they've hacked into place, they find child porn. They're like, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> FBI. Uh, I, I'm a hacker, but I'm going to turn this shit over to the FBI. Oh, uh, this, it's, why? I mean, there's no good reason. It's bad enough. All right, it's bad if, enough. If it's, if it's not the espionage reason I came up with earlier, it's because someone in marketing thought it was a good idea. And that that's why. And that's why marketers should be hit with a brick. The enemy of internet security is marketing. The, the number fucking one enemy. Because one day, some some bitch over in marketing will go, hey, I had this cool idea. What if... And that's when you hit him with a brick. What if I could track... Um, how many times and where exactly I pee every day and post it online and we could keep that and keep a record of it and keep a big log of it. And why are you looking at me like that? I thought that was Facebook. Don't they already have that mark? In that corner? <laughs> <laughs> Just it. Every time someone in fucking marketing has a great idea, it's... <laughs> Security yeah. has to, the, 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 the developers have to implement it. Then they have to secure it. And then they have to do it for no money. A feature gets added. It's, it's an incredibly insecure feature. It's an obvious bad idea, but marketing wants it done and no budget is allocated to increase for the required specs that would entail more security. It would entail maybe a better uh, uh, crypto solution for it. Maybe it would include, a, it would, wow, this is going to need more power. We're going to have to put a more expensive processing chip on there. It would cost us another two cents per unit. No! Fuck. And even still, though, this cloud shit, This data should never have been anywhere but on a local computer. It's, it's kids. This. Yo. Pretty much if any, any toy for your child has a camera this Christmas, when, when you're going shopping for your kids, when you're looking for toys, if the, the device you're looking at has a camera in it, that camera had better goddamn well have a physical shutter. Even if it's nothing more than a little piece of plastic that a switch that slides a little piece of plastic in front of the camera, it should fuck. If it doesn't, don't buy it. Don't buy anything where you where you cannot physically switch the son of a bitch to, to cannot see you. Because we're, we're at this, this point in time where everyone, everybody I know who has a laptop, you will look on their laptop and at their webcam 
and there's a little piece of fucking electrical tape over the fucking webcam. $700 laptop, piece of like $5 electrical tape sitting over, over the webcam. What? That's ridiculous. That is goddamn ridiculous at this point. I mean, Jesus, what? that is goddamn ridiculous. If, if they can't be bothered to include such a simple and necessary feature, they can't be bothered to get your money, is, is what it comes down to. Mike, you got all quiet on me. I'm scared. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm still there. Yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing with you completely. It's, uh, it is ridiculous. And um, I, there's unfortunately, there's no good way to fix this sort of thing because there's always going to be new security holes. Yeah. And when there's not, there's going to be a new technology which has unknown security holes in it. Well, that's when you need older security, like a simple piece of fucking plastic that slides over the camera. Well, that's not going to stop VTech for a company like that from holding all the No, things. no, it's not. But at least in the it would just a little bit of something, you know, just a little bit of something. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how, if and how they get sued over this. Uh, all right. Well, that all having been done, it's time to get to our questions this week. And uh, speaking of internet security, our first question kind of speaks to how people misunderstand a little bit about how a certain part of internet security works. Um, I make uh, use of what's called a VPN, a virtual private network. Okay. Um, I do this for a couple of reasons. One of those is it serves to anonymize traffic online. Not completely, not 100%. It is not bulletproof. But when I'm browsing somewhere online, it doesn't know where I'm browsing from because it's routed through another computer. All my, what, what did we, I'll explain a VPN here. Well, actually, no, let me, that, let me answer the question, ask, do the question, yeah, but go, but go. Hi, smart man. All right. Comes from uh, Jandervault. The question is, uh, last week on Twitter, I said you had some issues with the Hulu requiring you to turn off your VPN. I know that a virtual private server masks your internet usage by making your locate masking your location and hides traffic from the world at large. I'd like to know what options there are for setting up a VPN server. <laughs> Using a Raspberry Pi as a VPN, a viable option, for instance. Not locally, no. No. See, here's. A, do you want to cover it or? I can. I can start. Go Tell ahead. me when I get this wrong. Go ahead. Okay, so the way VPN works is. You're still having to connect to the internet, probably through whatever way you already connect to the internet. Yeah. You know, it's the first hop is going to be to your ISP. It's once you're past your ISP that you are connecting to the VPN to mask anything beyond there. If you have, if it's you know, you're here, ISP, VPN. If you try to put the VPN in there, in between you and the ISP, it's you're still going through your ISP. Yeah. A VPN, and everything is still being logged at the ISP level. Here's how a VPN works. You have your computer. Between you and the internet is a VPN. You connect to the internet. You get on your Comcast or whatnot. And then from there, you t instead of your all your internet traffic going straight to your computer, you say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, this computer over here, which is thousands of miles away from me with a completely different IP address. All of my internet traffic, I wanted to go through there first. So as far as the internet concerns, all of the stuff you're browsing is going to that computer, which is very far away from you with a different IP address and not your computer. And a different national block. Sometimes, yeah. Um, it, now you've still got to get from that VPN to you. Right. 
which anything in between is still going to log, but it's going to log as though it came from that VPN. So an example of this is having a VPN that has, say, uh, a, serv a VPN company, for example, say that has a server in the UK. Mm -hmm. And you connect to that, you say, hook me up through the UK. And the reason you may want to do this is because BBC's iPlayer, uh, which those called iPlayer has nothing to do with Apple, as far as I know, no. uh, only lets you watch BBC shows if you're in the UK. Maybe Australia too, I don't know. Um, and so you go, I want to watch Doctor Who a week before it hits the U.S. when it comes out there so I don't have to deal with all my asshole friends who see it on the East Coast giving me spoilers in the three hours difference I have. Uh, and so you watched a week earlier. In well, the you UK. can't. They come, it comes out the same day now. Oh, it does? Okay. Yeah. Oh, so, so, you're, so you're watching it several hours earlier than the East Coast people are. So you get to be the one with the spoilers in the U.S. rather than them. Okay, so you get to, and, but you get to rewatch re it whenever you want as well. Yeah. So you you connect to a, a, a UK VPN, and this UK VPN is now presenting itself to the BBC's iPlayer as though you were in the UK. So you can use that without it going, no, man, you're not here. Well, you have to assume the UK accent. All right, that right there is one of those gray area legal. And, and that's a way to do it, whether you know it's legal legalities involved. But that is how a VPN works. But there, can... there, there are other legitimate actual uses for it too. For, for oh, example, absolutely. For example, when Netflix was having that conflict with Comcast, you remember that a while back? Yep. Um, every Comcast customer who tried to connect to Netflix was finding out that being on the Comcast network, Netflix uh, quality was getting really slow and you couldn't watch stuff in HD and it was really fucking frustrating. However, a curious thing happened. When the traffic appeared to not come from Netflix, when it appeared to come from a separate VPN server to your computer, suddenly Netflix was working fine. So one, so that, and once that happened, I pretty much, I myself stopped using the internet without a VPN. I've got a relatively fast one. It's called ExpressVPN. I keep it connected always. And I don't look like I'm from out of the country. I keep it hooked to one in Chicago, which is relatively close to me. Because that nonsense was bullshit. And I, I lost faith in Comcast, who I have no choice but to use for my service provider. So I did not appreciate them degrading my service to for their own bullshit. And I, the other things is I don't trust a website that they, they, they suck up all this fucking data and I don't trust it. So I take very admittedly light, this in combination with some cookie management stuff, just ways to try to retain some little tiny sense of pride. I put it this way. If you walk into a store to buy a pint of milk and you walk up to the cashier and you've got the cash and you're pulling it out of your wallet and suddenly if the cashier reached over, snatched your wallet away and started looking at your driver's license, your date of birth, your social security, you would be kind of pissed off and everyone would understand why. Yep. Why is it okay when a website does the same thing? Very true. That, Very true. That, that just kind of fucking freaks me out. So, now why this, why you can't, Jan, Jan Devault, why you can't set up the VPN yourself is... It's got to be on a separate IP address, which means outside of your home, off your internet, off your internet service provider, set up by a third party. Now, if you want, you could set up a VPN for someone else to use. Yeah, you could set up a VPN in your on your connection in your house for someone else to connect into, but it's not going to do you any good. A VPN has always got to be based again 
somewhere. Is, so unfortunately, while I do appreciate the do-it-yourself attitude, I always love that. This is it's just the very nature of it. You you're gonna have to use a VPN that's based elsewhere. That's just the, the basis of how this happens. Um the next two questions are kind of the same. Uh one comes from Andy and one from Diego. Um I'll, I'll read Andy's. Uh he reads, which would be less frustrating? Replace my mo motherboard, then upgrade to Windows 10, or upgrade to Windows 10, then replace my motherboard. And Diego also asks, uh, thinking of upgrading my PC, I want to get a better motherboard. I want to know if I should reinstall Windows to do the upgrade or if I could just swap the parts and go. Okay. And uh, the the running Windows 7. So one thing, I, I can't remember if it was put in with Windows XP or Windows 7, but one of the things Windows put in, Microsoft put in Windows a while back, was you can only replace a certain number of components before you have to re-authenticate your Windows. <sighs> which is not necessarily a huge hassle, but it is a hassle. Yep. Uh, and some components, they said, don't count against this at all. Other components do. Yep. Like, for example, you can swap out all the mice and the keyboards you want and never have to re-authenticate Windows because they know hey, those break. Yeah. But uh, motherboards, video cards, hard drives uh, counted against it. I can't remember where else did and did not count against, but there was a list. Because there's always a list. Um, in either case, I think you're going to end up re-authenticating Windows. But I think if you upgraded first, it resets your count. Well, it's not, I'm just, not sure. The authentication is not just the problem. Now, this did get fixed in Windows 8 and Windows 10. But in Windows up to Windows 7, and this is pretty much true, I think XP 2000 and Windows 7, uh, Vista as well. The list, your motherboard has a bunch of different devices built into it. USB, a sound card, um, stuff you don't even know about, like the PCIe bus that allows information to go from the cards to the, the processor and the onboard chipset, all these different things. They all have drivers. They all have specific drivers. Yes. And when you switch from one motherboard to another, normally if you plug a new thing into Windows, Windows will look at it and go, oh, here's the driver for that. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Go. And worst case goes, uh, I didn't find one. Insert the disk that came with it. And you go, here you go. Motherboards are a wee bit different in some regards. Some of those are kind of at a fundamental level, those those drivers, things happen before Windows even starts up. Now, you when Windows installs for the first time, it installs in such a way that it goes, hey, I'm using generic shit for everything and we'll get everything installed and boom. But once it is installed, it relies on those drivers just to start the machine up. So what would happen used to be when you would swap one motherboard for another, if in a Windows up to Windows 7, the computer would try to start up Windows 7, it would look, it would see the drivers were goofed up, and you would get a blue screen. And it wasn't one of those, oh, it was the annoying blue screen. It was the blue screen that would pop up on the screen for five fucking seconds and then dis the fuck appear. Ugh! And you couldn't even read what the error code was. I'll, what I would do, I swear to God, what I was a, a wee, a wee tech taught to when this shit would happen is I'd have a notepad in my hand and I would poise myself perched at the monitor and I'd be like, switch it on. And I start scribbling it away what the error code was and the computer would go down and be like, damn it. I switch it back on and I scribble down with the rest of the fucking error. It was so, it won't be it to you if you got one letter of that error code wrong. The, this was a big problem. You couldn't swap a motherboard from one system to another without the entire thing going, no. Now, however, once Windows 8 started, um, it got better about this. Windows suddenly you could take a hard drive from one computer, drop it in another, and the, the hard drive would go, hang on, wait a minute, where am I? What's going on? Okay, got it, let's go. And it would start up. And it would 
So things have changed now as to whether you should upgrade first and then replace your mother. Well, I know it's a pain in the ass, but I always recommend you do a fresh install of Windows when you're upgrading Windows, just because, even though Windows 10 has made that hard. In this case, however, if you've got to upgrade, yeah, do it first before you replace your motherboard, because then you won't experience the Windows 7 fucking headache. Why isn't this working? And there are ways to fix it. There are ways to get around it with Windows 7 to make it go... There's a, I, I think there's a command you could do to make it unload all those drivers and act like it's being put on for the first time. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, I did this, I remember this from my Windows 7 exam. Uh, it, it, if there, there, there is a command to do it, it's, but I don't remember what it is. Yeah, because yeah, it's a complicated piece of fucking shit. It's, and what it, what it is, it, the intention of it is for you to do this command when you're about to make an image of the machine so you can apply that image elsewhere. Right. So you could make, you could set up a computer, you could install things, you can set it right the way you want it, you can image the drive, and then that way you can take that drive and you can install it on 30 different computers in one company without having to reinstall Windows on every single one and then install all the programs every single one. You just take it, boom, boom, boom. So there is a command that lets you do it, but it's a pain in the ass. Windows 10, and in this case, Windows 8, Windows 10, make it easier. You don't have to do all that. So, yes, upgrade to Windows 10 before you replace your... Wow, that was a long... We were taking the long way around on these fuckers. Um, let's see. We, we are? Yeah, we're taking the long way around on these questions. I mean, damn. And that was a long way to go to get to that fucking... Yes, you should upgrade Windows 10 <laughs> first. It's a long way to go! Um, all right, let's see. Will Jar, uh, let's see. Thinking of upgrading my main computer, got it for Christmas 2009. It served me well, but it's time to give it a much-needed upgrade. Um, I don't want to do anything until I know more details. One potential snag that could derail the whole thing. The power supply. I haven't checked to see if I'll need to upgrade the power supply on top of the graphics card and RAM, but if I do, I want to make sure I know what I'm doing beforehand. Uh, I've talked a bit about choosing the proper wattage, so I don't help with that, but I need to know if this thing will even fit in my case. I wonder if you could help me with that. Uh, any tips or recommendations? Brr. Okay. Well, that's, a, that's a very good question. Yeah. Uh, generally speaking, if you have a mini <clears throat> tower or a tower case, whatever, whatever case that is. Mid-tower or tower. Yeah. yeah. Um, you're going to be able to look up online, say, even by that model, perhaps, uh, what power supply will fit in there. And then just physically go, okay, this is X, Y, Z, you know, length, width, width depth, um, height, or whatever. Uh, and, and then just take that with you when you go to, you know, your Best Buy or your fries or your whatever, and go, right size, right, si right size, not the power, oh. wrong size, too much power, aha, here we go. You'll find, if you go to places like Newegg, if even if you go into a store like Best Buy, on the packaging and listed on the product description, there is actually a length, width, and depth for power supply sizes. Because And, and it will say, sometimes, what case it'll fit. Not, yeah. not by brand, it'll say, it's mini tower, tower, that now, sort of thing. Now, normally, if you have an aftermarket case if you have a case you purchased yourself to build and put all your stuff in the computer in those tend to be fairly generic when it comes to power supplies those will tend to be one size fits all tend to be not always but if you bought like an hp or a, i'm about to say lenovo but heck, they don't exist really anymore or um <laughs> lenovo not really relevant um if you bought an hp or a dell or something like that sometimes those have proprietary things on them that were made to fit. In that case, a quick way to find out is the old-fashioned way. You open up your case, unscrew the four screws that are holding your power supply into your case. Don't disconnect. Unplug Plug it the power first. Supply. You don't need to disconnect any of the wires at this point. Just unscrew the power supply, slip it out of place. Carefully. Take a ruler. 
and measure the three axes. Now, if interject one thing, if for whatever reason you can't slip out of place, there's components blocking it in, yeah. whatever, and you have to slide a ruler in there to measure it, use a plastic ruler. Do not use a wooden ruler with a metal edge. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because then you could possibly catch some voltage and go flying across the room. Whee! And we here at Radio Data are not responsible if you catch voltage and yeah. fly across the room. We are not responsible if you do the stupid shit we tell you to do. And the reason I bring that one up <laughs> is because my father knew someone who reached in not to a computer, into a power distribution panel with a ruler to toggle something back on. Had a metal edge. Had a metal edge. Going across the room. <laughs> Use a plastic fucking ruler. Use plastic. But yeah. Well, in this case, they they had a they had a two foot piece of of um, broomstick. But they, they everyone else they're used for this. He goes, oh, it's only one foot. I can reach. Well, it's only just over a foot. I can reach in there with this ruler. Big old piece of broomstick there, sitting said used <sighs> for power toggling. But yeah, it's it, you should you should j the measurements for all power supplies are listed on the packaging. That's why, it's and they're all pretty close too. Yeah, so you I mean, you should be able to without any difficulty be able yeah. unless it's unless it is a strange power supply or is built for a very strange form factor of a case. There are there are some form factor cases that have customized power supplies to fit in there. I don't recommend buying those those cases. <laughs> yeah, no. Don't, okay, some of them look really neat. They look neat, but then you have something breaks and you have to replace it. And it's like, shit, they don't make that anymore. So I have to get a whole new case and a new power supply and put all my stuff in a new thing and or, fuck. Or hope that someone has the power supply on eBay and that they're not lying when they oh, said new. Yeah, fucking having the eBay old shit. All right. Our last question tonight is the hair puller for me. Okay. Oh, fuck. I hate this one. All right. Uh, this one comes to us from Katie. I recently started trying to play a game, Ark Survival Revolved, and have run into an issue that... Evolved. Survival Evolved. Evolved. Whatever. It's, it's, it's Daisy with dinosaurs. Um, okay. I've run into an issue that causes crashes my game and seems to be caused by my video card. The error I get is display driver NVIDIA Windows kernel mode driver version 359 stopped responding and has successfully recovered. Those are words that if you tell to a technical person it's it's like you've grabbed their scrotum and or labia <laughs> and have started pulling. Nash has both, by the way. They're both on a shelf in my bathroom, just in case. So um, they just started pulling because this quite. Oh, that error. All right. So, okay, so number number one <laughs> cause to my mind is and this is just with not even any seconds of research, just experience with video cards is card overheating. Number two cause is game does not like card update drivers. Of course, in this case that I checked, that is the most current one. And it's an NVIDIA? Yeah, it was an NVIDIA. Yeah. So far, I have tried lowering the graphics setting of the game, changing some settings in the NVIDIA control panel, setting the physics process of my NVIDIA card, setting power management to prefer maximum performance, disabling NVIDIA HD audio devices, rolling back my driver, dusting out my computer, and changing my power options in Windows to high performance in the PCI Express for link state power ma management settings to off. Katie, you have pretty much gone through everything possible software-wise to solve this issue. But the reason why this is one of those hair-pulling questions is if updating the driver doesn't fix it, there's one of two reasons. Either there's a bug in the most current driver that's going to need to be fixed in the next driver, or 
your video cards busted. Yeah. This is, and it's one of those just fucking, because you will tear your hair out trying to run this down. And many a good man and woman have done so. You will walk into IT departments around the world and there's a bald person for some <laughs> reason. And, and you're like, you're awful young to have gone bald. And they'll just say to you, NVIDIA kernel mode driver has stopped responding and successfully recovered. And you know why. Where it's just like, oh, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, man. I know. Oh. Oh. Is there anything I'm I can do? Looking at what video cards you have. And uh, she's I got think... it's a GeForce 660. GTX 660, yeah. yeah. Which is a relatively um, new one. Not the newest, but it's it's a few. It's not ancient. Yeah, and I think your motherboard would. If if you decide I need to play this game and I have money to spare, uh, I believe your motherboard will support a GeForce GTX 950. It's we only got two gigs of RAM, but, but it, it it has enough processing power to offset that, and it's about in the same ballpark as a 660 power wise. And uh, EV, EVGA, who is the same people who make your current one, make a, a version of that. Yeah, around $180, depending on where you, where you get it. Um, I don't know if that will solve the problem, though. If it is, if it is a driver-based issue, rather than a, I'm not cool enough to run this game issue, well, I don't um, think it's a matter of it's not cool enough. I think there might actually be some damage to the card. Yeah. I've seen that. that if it overheated enough that it damaged the card, you're going to see driver issues. Or it might have just been an, uh, something happened with the card at some point, and now you're just now seeing it. Yeah. Which is one, uh, of, one of those problems with intermittent issues with tech, with computers. Now, you said... Yeah, yeah, it is. Anyway, you said uh, you blew the dust out of the computer. One thing I would do before you go too much further. Of course, power down the computer, pull the video card out, and with holding the fan on the video card in place, yeah. blow dust off the fan. Now, the reason you hold the, uh, the, the fan in place is because fans have a certain max speed that they'll go without damaging the fan. And if you blow dust from too close, you can spin that fan faster than it means to go and, and damage, damage the, the fan. fan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's why I say, hold this. You can blow off a fair amount of dust. And I would, you know, get, you know, blow dust both one way and, you know, because it's going to have some intake. The fan is, gonna, the fan is probably going to do the intake itself. And then it's going to have the outtake on the back of the, the car or vice versa. I don't know how the, I think it depends on, on the, the car sometimes. Um, and so, like I say, holding the fan in place, blow dust both way, blow air both ways. See if you can get more dust out of there. It it can't hurt. Now, I, I do want to point out another issue that can cause this problem is a lack of a, a, an insufficient power to the power card, uh, a lower power supply that doesn't have enough wattage. And the reason I didn't address it in this case is she lists she has a Corsair HX seven hundred and fifty, which is a seven hundred fifty watt power supply. It's it should be plenty. Yeah, that's more than sufficient. So that's not what's causing this one. That's one of the first ones you look at. That's not what's causing this. This, okay. but that does bring to mind another thing. When you have your computer reassembled, you know, if you do any taking apart, make sure, especially in the video card, because it's a video issue, that the power, if there's additional power plugs on that card, I can't remember if that one has one of them or not. I think it does. That they're seated firmly. Yeah. You know, don't 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 wiggle back and forth to the point where you snap something on the car, but make sure it's plugged all the way down. We'd like you to try everything you can before you have to spend money. Yes. Because we don't get mm. kickbacks. No. Yeah. <laughs> if we had kickbacks, we'd be like, boy, you gotta buy this and this and this, but we don't. No, but it's, it's, th this is one of those, man, what I wouldn't give for transparent error codes. Oh, God, yes. Just for an error code that said, okay, look, here's what's going on. Here's what or, you need to do. Or at least an error code that says, your error code is blah. 
look this up online at. Yeah, they don't do that. They're just like, here's this thing. What the fuck does that mean? Because then they could get, they could have a you know a million different error codes. You go okay, the first two digits were this. Then uh, this drop down, and then next drop down. Then, oh, and it says my fan wasn't getting fast enough, and so my computer was slowing down. And, you know, it, it shat itself. No, don't nobody know what. A, no, don't nobody know what a Windows kernel mode driver is. Don't <laughs> nobody. Don't lie. Now, uh, actually, there is one other thing we can suggest. And that is check the game to see if there's a patch for the game. Yeah. Because it's entirely possible that the flaw is not on the uh, mm. driver, the actual driver side. It's on the game side feeding random bullshit to the game. And the game's going like, I can only handle this much bullshit and I've gone to here. <laughs> uh, well, so, so yeah, all right. Uh, it does, you do say you, you're getting between two and four hours. Uh, you don't say if you're getting any graphics effects before that, such as tearing, uh, random graphics bugs, which if you're not, that sort of hints that it's not overheating. Um, uh, there's uh, another thing you can do. There's a program called SpeedFan that I would download. Uh, and it's very easy to configure, and I tell it to display the GPU temperature. That way, one of the things you can look at is, is my GPU getting yeah, too hot? You can, yeah, you, you can see if it's getting a little warm. Especially, it, you're saying two to four hours, that that might have hit a thermal threat. That, that might speak to a thermal threshold, but yeah, so, all right. Two best options here. One, wait for new updates, either from the driver or the game, or <sighs> a new video card. I, I hate ones like that. I hate the shit you can't fix. But in this case, there may be some kind of glitch with the card, and we're sorry. We told we told you everything we know that don't cost you money. But, yeah, and the speed fan program is free, by the way. Yeah, speed fan that'll tell you at least what what temperatures you're getting on your graphics card, and and it, it actually it, it'll tell you temperatures of any temperature sensor in the computer that it can talk to, uh, which is useful if you go. Well, maybe it's you know it's it's not the, the video card's fine, but my CPU was getting really hot. Maybe that's the issue, and so you know to look at maybe the the, the heat sink there because although it says kernel mode driver. It's not necessarily something that is inherent with the video card. It might be how it talks to the rest of the computer. It is, it is as Nash has indicated, one of those really pain in the ass things to track down. Well, that's going to just about do it for us for this time out. Thank you, Mike. Sure. If you have questions for next time, send those to request at radiodeadair.com. We'll see if we can get about answering for you. Meanwhile, take care, everybody. Good night.